I've learned to not make any predictions because I'm just wrong more often than not. And so uh, <laughs> both Helen Hunt and myself were very content and, and proud of how we ended the show all those years ago and thought, well, why would we ever want to just, you know, mess with it? It's, it's, it, we, we landed the plane, now walk away. But what happened, everybody was, there were all these other shows coming back, so they kept approaching us, and we would, we would have lunch all the time anyway, and, and uh, so I had to talk about it. We thought, well, you know, it's kind of would be fun just for the idea of playing together. And so that was the appeal. And then when we thought about, well, actually, there's a fun uh, sort of story to tell, because they're baby when we went off the air we had an infant and now this baby would be off going to college we thought well that's a really interesting moment because yeah. i had just gone through that myself and it's brutal it's brutal you have a young baby oh. you'll see when they'll leave you and you go wait oh. a minute i miss all the annoying crying terrible things that you did to me bring them back <laughs> so so we thought we had a really bring good back home. thing to write about I like that because you, you you do have to consider where the characters are now, what's going on in their lives, and will the people who love the show 20 years ago still be engaged? And that's proven to be true. Yeah. I'm curious um, what you're thinking about the stand-up world. I don't know if you saw it, Dave Chappelle did a big comedy show from his family farm in Ohio. People were socially distanced. Um, they took their temperatures as they arrived there. Any chance you would do something at your home? Are you ready to get back into this and in this new way of stand-up? But, you know, what does the future look like for stand-up? That's the one thing I do miss. I do miss being out and performing live because you can't replicate that. And I think there's something so magical and special about it that, I don't know, maybe it'll work. I, I, I It doesn't appeal to me. I've heard all, we drive by or we go to a drive-in and everybody sits in their car and went, that's how you do a rally <laughs> or a movie. With comedy, you need to see faces. You need that interaction. And Dave Chappelle's was was brilliant, but you know, I I think he he wasn't up there because he wanted to get the laughs. I mean, he was up there. He he needed to say something. And, but uh, I think I'm gonna wait. Because I don't think I'm going to start bringing people into my home. That seems uh, inefficient and costly. Your energy bill may skyrocket, you know. But listen, I was thinking, though, going back to Mad About You on network TV, this was years before this whole streaming thing. And I'm sure people thought, who's going to pay $9.99 or $14.99 a month to subscribe right. to a streaming service? We did that, and we do that. And now we can't picture life without Netflix. Maybe this for a while will be the, the, the life of a stand-up comedian. Can it survive? Uh, we'll see. You know, one of the things I loved, I had taken the long spell off from doing stand-up. And then was when I came back, what was so encouraging and refreshing to me was there was something so pure and simple about it that, you know, and I, I specifically said at the time, I realized this is not something you can technologically advance. There's something live, you know, we've been doing this for thousands of years. Somebody is talking or performing and the other people are sitting there listening. That is uh, really basic and primitive. And it's not that you can't quite fabricate it. So uh, I, I hope that uh, we will all someday soon be back to what we used to call normal.